Hey everybody, welcome to the Red Zone. Sean Brown, Michael Johnson here, and this is Week 10 College Football. Welcome to our show on a Tuesday. Unable to post nor as normal on Monday because we weren't able to shoot. So um, you get it a day late, but yeah. better late than never. Um, hey, before we get started, check out our official sponsor, BUSR. BUSR.com slash Red Zone. Get some free play with the promo code. Um, and also, you know, I had a lot of people messaging saying, are you doing your picks? Are you doing your picks? It's Monday. Where are they at? Hey, go to our YouTube channel. You can see it right here. Click on the community tab. It's a feed that's just like, almost like Twitter. Anytime anything happens, it's going to be posted there. So if you're wondering where something's at, if we're going to post something late, that's just go right there. That's going to tell you what's up. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Week nine, biggest game, Michigan State, Michigan. Uh, Kenneth Walker the third, in my opinion, clearly the front runner for the Heisman. Yeah. And, and and let me say the reason why is because there's a lot of great players out there, Bryce Young, Corral, I mean Caleb Williams, but Kenneth Walker the third, what he did, 195 yards and five touchdowns, he's the first player to have a stellar game against a top rate graded opponent. Yeah. I mean nobody else has done that yet yeah. to on, to that level. What and Michigan's think? known to stop the run. I mean, and and yeah. that's what he. Did, was able to do on that Michigan defense. Right. I mean, just impressive. Um, you know, I don't know that, that there's anybody. I mean, the Heisman is an MVP award. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's anybody that is as important to their team. I mean, you can name a ton of quarterbacks, right. but um, he just is is so it just amazing. I mean, yeah. he's incredible. Yeah. But um, I, I'd agree with you on that. I think he eclipsed a thousand yards with that game. Um, you know, into week ten, and and we've seen two thousand yard seasons before, um, especially with with high volume rushing teams, uh, but he just does it, you know, really efficiently. So yep. uh, there was a few others. Ohio State beats Penn State. It was mostly close most of the game, but you know, I don't really care to talk too much about this last week because. <laughs> I had the worst week. Please, please tell me you didn't use my picks this last <laughs> week. Um, you would have lost some money because I was six and fourteen. Whoa, I was nine and eleven. Yeah. So yeah, it was a bad was, week. It was a really bad week, and I even told you. Yeah. I told you, whatever everybody else is doing, the Sooners are usually doing the opposite. Yeah. And OU comes out and just whoops yeah. up on Texas Tech. Yeah. Um. So I was happy in that regard, but not happy that I probably let you guys down. And, uh, man, that's the worst week I've ever had. Auburn beats Ole Miss. Oklahoma State just manhandles Kansas. Yeah. Um, and then Cincinnati beats Tulane. Um, you know, and that's, that's relevant here because Cincinnati and Oklahoma are pretty close in the rankings. Yeah. Both undefeated. Both have – some really a soft schedule. Yeah. Um, the difference being is that Cincinnati has the big win over Notre Dame, but now they have a common opponent in Tulane. Yeah. And so um, Cincinnati, it was thirty-one to twelve was the final score. It was a lot, lot closer than that. Yeah. It really was. And yeah. So and you know Oklahoma beat them by five. So that's yeah, kind of the, the common denominator. The now. ones I got wrong, I'll just name those real quick, um, just so I'm transparent with y'all, and just so you know. These are the games that surprised me. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everyone that was wrong, because obviously you're you're going to be surprised if you yeah. you thought it was one way. But Cincinnati, Tulane, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, um, yeah. Miami beating Pitt. So Pitt all of a sudden just isn't the best team in the ACC like we thought. Yeah. Um, hey, yeah. hats off to Miami. That's two wins in a row. They yeah. beat NC State, then they beat Pitt. Both yeah. right teams. I and mean, Tyler Van Dyke. Has been playing tremendous. I mean, yeah. they found a quarterback finally. I yeah. mean, they really did. Washington State covers against Arizona State. Um, of course, Oklahoma um, covered the 19 points that we locked it in at. Uh, I took Florida State, and they covered against Clemson. Yeah, yeah. Oregon um, beats Colorado pretty bad, but they. Yeah, I think it was 23 points that they beat them by. We locked it in at 26. Yep. Um, and then Ole Miss and Auburn. I really thought that Ole Miss would give Auburn more of a um, of a game, but um, then Mississippi State and Kentucky, uh, Oklahoma State, Kansas. I did pick Kansas. I kind of overreacted on the way that Kansas played Oklahoma. Um, SMU and Houston. Man, what a crazy game that was. 
100 yard kickoff return to end the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What in the world? Um, <laughs> and then Penn State, Ohio State. Um, Ohio State just wasn't able to cover there. Uh, and then Fresno State and San Diego State. A, a game we didn't pick, but there was 80 points between the two teams at halftime was BYU. Yeah. Uh, and Utah. Uh, and Utah. Yep. That that was insane. And then did you, no, that that's not right. Right, BYU didn't play Utah. No, no BYU no. and Utah played at the same time because one was on ESPN, one was on ESPN two. BYU played. Who did they play? Hang on, I'll, I'll I can get it pulled up here. It was insane. Yeah. And BYU was down um, in in the first half, and then yeah, they ended up coming back and winning. Um, let's see. It was Utah old... played UCLA. That's right. Yep. I forget who BYU played. BYU and remember. Virginia. Virginia, So BYU yes. ended up winning 66-49, to 49, um, but they were down, let's see, at halftime. Halftime they were down 42-38. to 38. So um, yeah. Virginia just gets one touchdown there in the second half. Um, man, and BYU almost doubles their score. Yeah. So they, they continue to play, and Virginia didn't. So. Yep. So, but Fresno points. State knocks yeah. off San Diego State. Yeah, and now uh, Fresno State is in control of Mountain West West Division. All they have to do is win out, I and mean, because they have the head-to-head, uh, San Diego State now has a loss. So, um, you know, obviously Cincinnati is undefeated, but one other team that in the Group of Five that is still undefeated, UTSA. Yeah. So they have a game. Coming UTSA up. and Utah coming yep. up. Two teams yep. that um, were really. Two of the worst teams, you know, in all of college football. Yeah. All of a sudden, they have a, a college football program there in, right. in El Paso and San Antonio. So, yep. man. That, that, Crazy. Yeah. I remember OU going down to play um, uh, UTEP there at the Sun Bowl, uh, I think 2011. Um, you know, at the time, I'd said, I don't understand why they're playing. Then we had some UTEP fans that were like, this is a historic yeah. venue and all this stuff. And... and so I respect them. Um, not throwing any shade or anything yeah. like that. But hey, you ready to get the picks? I'm ready to get okay. the picks. You seem like you're going to say something. I was just going to say um, I, I, I'm I'm done trying to break down games by stats because yeah. I do terrible at the picks <laughs> when I do it. Seriously, if I just yeah. go with my gut, I yeah. do so much better. Well, I stay above sixty percent. I'm, I'm, got, I'm yeah. not doing. I'm not going to tell you who's ranked third in defense. And, I, forget it. I, yeah. I I didn't I didn't research. I'm going by what I've seen with my eyes. I'm changing it up this week too. I'm going strictly by what I've seen the with the eye test. Here's the thing. That's why betting is so crazy. It's yeah. just you never know. I mean, that's right. why they call it a bet. Yeah. Um. You just never know what's going to happen. And if you just happen to have a bad week where you lose out on this one, this one. Yeah. Some some teams just match up bad against other teams too. Yeah. They might be better talent wise. And for the rest of the season, they might be better, but they just don't match up very well. I mean, yeah. Kansas State against Oklahoma two years in a row. I mean, they were able to get the best of them. I think that um, – and then also, these are long seasons. You yeah, know, they these, are. These guys are going it, from 10 games in high school to now – College is so unpredictable. Yeah. I mean, and, and just, just as an example, like this year I started doing NFL picks really just because people said you should do NFL picks. Yeah. And I didn't think I'd do very good at it because I honestly don't watch as much NFL as I do college. Yeah. Last week I was nine and four. This week eight and six going into the Monday night game. We'll see how that one finishes yeah. out. But it's like I'm actually like above sixty percent in the NFL picks, and I'm hovering at like fifty two percent in the college picks, and yeah. I'm doing better with NFL picks, and it it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, I'm locked into college much more. Yeah. So anyway, before we get into picks, remember to like the video, hit the bell. And we're gonna hit a bender hit this a bender. week okay. on the uh, <laughs> on subscribe that. button. So okay, yeah. and always leave your comments. So yep. all right, let's get started to week ten picks. Twenty games here. Um, there was a lot of there was a couple top twenty five teams that left out because we've limited it to twenty games, and there was more than twenty games yeah. that involved top twenty five just because so many teams top twenty five teams are playing unranked teams. So a couple of games got left out, including the first one of uh, Louisiana, because they're back in the um, in my top 25 anyway. Uh, but we didn't pick that. So let's go ahead and get started. Missouri is at Georgia. Georgia is a 38-point favorite. Georgia coming off the win over Florida. I don't see any – there's no letdown with Georgia. I mean, yeah. they are just – they are heading above anybody in college football. There is nobody even close to Georgia right now. I mean, they are so yeah. dominant. 
I, I did see um, – I was looking at the injury reports. Um, I tend to look at donbest.com if, if you guys were wondering where, where I'm getting this information. So if anything's wrong, if you know of anything different from this, let us know in the comments. But um, – I'm seeing Eric Gilbert uh, questionable against Missouri. Dominic Blaylock. Mm -hmm. um, those are two main. And then another wide receiver. I don't know how much he plays, but Arian Smith. Um, and then, of course, you've got George Pickens out for the season. Tyke Smith, that uh, transfer from West Virginia. Um, but that's a lot of your, your big-time yeah. receivers that are out. And so that could kind of tell you why they're not able to get as much through the air as they have been. You know, yeah. their defense is incredible, um, well, but their passing game kind of leads a little bit to be desired. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, that defense, yeah. smothering. Yeah. Uh, here, look, last week, Missouri struggled with Vanderbilt. Yeah. They won, but they struggled. Um, th this just isn't even close. 38, I hate huge spreads, but I think Georgia covers 38. Yeah, I'm going to take Georgia. Georgia's pretty good at covering. Yeah. Um, they cover more than they don't, so I think that's pretty okay. easy one. Ohio State is a 15-point favorite at Nebraska. This one, to me, is interesting because now, after this game, Oklahoma and Ohio State, who are within the top six, have a common opponent that you can compare yeah. after this game. Ohio State does travel up to Nebraska. Um, and, you know, they didn't cover 17 last week against Penn State. Really, with Ohio State, when it comes to the spread, it's a coin toss. It really is. You yeah. don't know which team's going to show up. Nebraska has been playing decent on defense, although they lost again last week to – I forget who they even played who? at this point. Nebraska. Um, they lost again, but – I'm trying to think. You know, um, but at the end of the day, I, I mean, you look at the Penn State game. Purdue. Purdue? Yeah. Okay. Well, Purdue's pretty good, and they throw the ball really well. But um, – you look at this game and Ohio State, their offense, even against Penn State, who I think has a good defense, mm -hmm. they still score, what, 30-some points. They're going to score 40 on Nebraska mm -hmm. eventually. It, uh, what, it, what this comes down to is how many points does Nebraska score because Ohio State's defense still has issues. Um, and this comes down to rather or not Ohio State covers, ha does Martinez turn the ball over a lot? Yeah. And you're talking about Ohio State's defense, even though they haven't been playing really well, they're the number one scoring defense in college football. And I think that that's how telling. Many, how many mobile quarterbacks has uh, Ohio State played? So uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to look that up. But um, anyway, I, I'm just going to go ahead and take Ohio State to cover here. Yeah, um, I'm looking here. Nebraska is five and four, so they're above five hundred um, as far as covering uh, against the spread. And then Ohio State, um, they are four three and one, okay. uh, so they've had a push. And yeah, I don't, man. Nebraska has the ability to to play really well. Um, yeah. You know, one of the somebody said a, a reason they thought Scott Frost was um, was still being retained after you see all these other coaches being fired, which Gary Patterson, yes, yeah. mutually parting ways with TCU is crazy. Um, Midway through the season, after yeah. twenty years, yeah. you've got we'll, three we'll talk games. About that in a you've second, got three sure. games left yeah. anyway. Um, so, you know, they've been close in a lot of these losses. So it's it's man, I. This is a tough one, um, but you got to think 15 points. I, I'm going to go ahead and take Ohio State. Okay. I'm going to take them to cover. And then briefly, we'll just talk about, I mean, Gary Patterson, because we didn't talk about that in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, this guy took TCU from nothing, from yeah. the SWAC to um, Conference USA to Mountain West to then the Big 12. Yeah. I mean, guys, come on. These school officials, these school leadership – you can't do, do something at the like end of that. the season. Right. Do it Let at him the finish end. the season. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so funny. disrespectful to do that to it's, him. We expect these college kids to to maintain with their school, and then we throw a big fit when they transfer somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then coaches, you know, the program just completely hangs them out to dry. You know, yeah. it's I, I get if there's a reason. You know, if they've completely lost the locker room, they're fighting with players. Um, then yeah, but I highly doubt that's happening. No. 
with Matt Wells with Texas Tech. They fired him right before the OU game. With a game. winning record, five and three. I'm sorry, but Texas Tech's been so terrible. Yeah, five and three is great for Texas Tech. Yeah. I mean, I don't. And everything I've seen from it. Matt Wells, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's and only I know, in his third year. I, I know in this industry, nice guys, you know, you, you can tend to get kind of run over a little bit, but yeah, and that doesn't deserve you to keep your job. But it's like, why? I, I don't you, get it. I, you I don't understand. You can't it. replace them mid-season. Yeah, you're not going to go hire a coach yeah. this week. So why fire him? Let him finish the they season. They did Sonny Cumbie a disservice by just throwing him in. Oh, I mean, he yeah. looked so just flustered he did. during that game and just like yep. frustrated and out of sorts. And then Matt Wells' brother was the tight ends coach, and he's sitting there having to coach this team. It's just. Um, it's yeah. It's crazy. All right, it let's get crazy. let's get back to our picks. Yeah. Wake Forest is again playing North Carolina. North Carolina, a two and a half point favorite. Yeah. I know Howe is really good. I know they played close to Notre Dame somewhat. You know, they're um, four and four, and Wake is eight and zero. Oh. What right. is going on? Well, Wake is not getting any respect, and and we had people comment about this because when I did my top twenty five, I had Wake at like ten. Yeah. And they're like, what? They're undefeated. How could they be at ten? Why aren't they higher? Listen. This is why they're not higher. They're not going to be any higher in the CFP rankings either, and this is why. I get they're undefeated, but here's the deal. You have year in, year out, Alabamas, Georgias, Ohio States, Oklahoma, year in, year out, Mm -hmm. uh, undefeated, one loss, up there at the top. This is a one-year – Wake is never at the top. They're not a traditional winning team, and they're having one good season. Is it real? Is it something they could duplicate next year? Or they just have one group, one class, and well, then hey. they're done. And I'm just saying that these rankings, you you wonder, is this legit? Is it not? Because Alabama is good year in, year out. Ohio State is good year in, year out. You know that's a powerful, good football team. You don't know about Wake yet. LSU was a flash in the pan this last time. Sure. I know. I but mean, LSU is also they a were traditional also powerhouse. Records and stuff right. For their so, offense. Yeah. But I'm just saying that nobody is buying Wake as being a top six team right now. Yeah. Nobody is saying, nobody thinks legitimately that Wake Forest can compete with Cal- with Oklahoma and, and Ohio State, and Alabama, and Georgia, and Michigan State. And they, they just have to prove it by playing on the field. They, yeah. just, they have to. And, um, and and, I, and somebody's going to bring up Cincinnati. Cincinnati's been undefeated, I think, last year, the year before they were 11-1. and one. They've proven it over the past five years yeah. since Luke Fickle's been there. This is well, not a one-year shot, a flash in the pan for Cincinnati. Okay, so a couple of things with this game. Yep. Um, North Carolina, North North Carolina, <laughs> North Carolina's last five games, they're three and two, or two and three. Mm-hmm. Um, and... They played Duke. They beat Duke 38-7. to Wake Forest played Duke and beat them 45-7 to this last week. Um, so give Wake yeah. a little bit more credit than that. They should right. they should at the very least be favored in this oh, game. Oh, I think they should absolutely um, be favored. This, this to me is like a lock to win some money this now, week. Now, one thing I did see was, you know, when they played at home against Louisville, they beat them 34 or 37-34. to um, The game was close against Syracuse. Uh, for a large part of that Army game, it was really close, um, and then they pulled away. Um, and then Duke, I mean, they just they did what everybody's doing to Duke yeah. this year. And then with North Carolina, they get beat by Notre Dame. Um, they win against Miami by three. They get beat by uh, Florida State, who's down. They beat Duke, and then uh, Georgia Tech beat them forty-five to twenty-two. So I, it just it's kind of mind-boggling the. Uh, the spread on hey, that one, I would definitely uh, take Wake Forest. Yep, I'm taking and, Wake. And maybe some of the voters are, are some of the betters are, are saying, you know, maybe this is the week that Wake Forest catches. I mean, a, everybody's a losing. Yeah, you know, it's 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 one of those deals. But I I don't think it's this week. And you know, North Carolina going back to that Miami game. I mean, I am just I I have no proof. This is just a gut feeling. But I absolutely believe that there are some people, some players on that team, taking money to shave points or to lose. Well, and Wake, I really believe that Wake after Forest, the last few weeks. Wake Forest is four and four against the spread. Um, North Carolina, I can't, I can't imagine that they're any higher than that. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but I'm going to take Wake Forest in this. Okay. Next one, Liberty is at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a nine and a half point favorite. That's come down since the opening line. Um, so money is going towards Liberty here, mm-hmm. um, and. 
I mean, you were, me and you were talking beforehand, and yeah. you, you kind of feel like uh, maybe Liberty might look. Look, Liberty six and three against the spread. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Lane Kiffin has been making some stupid decisions yeah. lately. I mean, dumb. I mean, he went for it three or four times on fourth down in the red zone instead of getting points. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. I'm sorry, but that that that's not the makings of a good head coach. And and I don't care if you do have a Heisman contending quarterback. When you have a coach making decisions like that, you're not going to win a lot of games. So yeah. um, I, I think I'm with you here. I think I want Liberty in the points here. Well, and Malik Willis is a really good player. Um, he's at, uh, let's see, he's at just shy of 2,000 yards on the season, 9.5 per attempt. Uh, that's, that's yards per attempt. 21 touchdowns, 6 interceptions with a rating of 173.4. Completion percentage, I'd like to see that be a little bit better. It's at 66.7. Um, but he's he's – Playing really, really good. Yeah, um, Liberty. I've got Liberty um, at least to cover the spread. I think Ole Miss may turn around. You know, they try to get the the Auburn loss out of their you know that bad taste out of their mouth. So okay. um, I think they win the game. But I think um, yeah. I think was, Hugh Freeze was at uh, was he at Auburn or Ole Miss? I he always was get at those Ole Miss. Okay, so yeah, yeah. there you go. I mean, one more reason. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next one, SMU is a five and a half point favorite against Memphis. Um, I, I think SMU bounces back. I mean, the Houston, Houston was uh, only had one loss. We knew this was going to be a great game. It was an even even pick last week. Yeah. Um, a hundred yard kickoff return is the difference in that game. It was thirty seven thirty seven up to that point. Um, Memphis is just not as good as either one of those teams. Um, they at least this year. So I've got SMU winning now, and covering. Now at home. Memphis has, tough, has, but... a, has a decent crowd. Um, I did catch one game where it looked like it was not very good. I love their stadium though; it's it's yeah. really cool looking. Um, but there 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 was a game I caught of theirs where they beat they, somebody significant earlier in the year. I can't remember. It um, was uh, Mississippi State. Yes, Mississippi State. Did they beat Mississippi State? Was I that, believe so. Yeah. Was that when they were at home? Yeah, 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 they won thirty-one twenty-nine at, home. Um, at yeah. home. That may have been the game that I caught, but uh, no, that would have been pretty full. Um, I don't know, maybe the Navy. I think it was Navy. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm going to take SMU. I think they bounce back here. I know that they did have, I think, a running back get hurt this last week, but um, it won't matter as long as Tanner Mordecai. I think is Mordecai. There. I think he kind of turns things around and. Okay. Not turn things. Right. He had a phenomenal game: three hundred four yards, mm-hmm. three touchdowns, one interception, and his team just couldn't, you know, yeah, couldn't stop Houston. So, okay. um, but I think he keeps rolling and um, gets a win. Okay. Next one: Illinois is at Minnesota. Minnesota is a fourteen and a half point favorite. Minnesota. I have them in my top twenty-five. They've only lost two games, and one of those was to Ohio State. Now, yes, the second one was to Bowling Green. But they've been on a roll. They've been winning. Uh, so that's why we're picking this game because I have them in my top twenty-five. Um, 14 and a half, uh, Illinois, you just don't know who's going to show up. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think at this point, I think Minnesota's not going to have a letdown against anybody. Um, and it's at home. Um, Minnesota now plays outdoors, is that right? Their outdoor stadium. You're in November, probably going to be very cold up there. That's going to probably affect, I know Illinois is in that northern area too. They get snow and things like that. But it could be um, pretty uncomfortable in this game. And, um, you know, a home game for Minnesota, I like them to cover 14 and a half. Yeah, Minnesota's covering, uh, they're 5-2-1 and one against the spread, so a 71.4% uh, win percentage. And then Illinois is 4-4-1, four, four and one, so 50% on them. So um, I've got Minnesota. Okay. Tulsa is at Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a 22.5 point favorite. I'm just going to say this. Cincinnati struggled with Navy. They somewhat struggled with Tulane. I know they won 31 to 12, but it was closer than that score. Yeah. Um, listen, if they struggle a third week with a Tulsa, um, I don't know if they can stay in the top four. Yeah. I, I just don't. I mean, um, not after three. Now, Tulsa played Ohio State earlier this year. So what Cincinnati does will be telling. That's a comparable game. Yeah. Um, so, but listen, I, every team that's played Tulsa, it's been a tough win for them. Tulsa's defense plays really well. 
And I think Tulsa's defense plays well enough to keep it within 20. So I'm taking Tulsa in the points in this one. Yeah, I want to look up the uh, Cincinnati is number three in the country in turnover, turnover margin. Yeah. Um, they've gotten 20, um, 14 interceptions, um, and they've lost uh, – the margin's 11. Um, and then – Tulsa's quarterback, what's his name? Davis Brin has thrown eleven touchdowns, eleven interceptions. Yeah. So if they can pick him off, um, then yeah, I mean they they can. I think that that's well within their, um, you know, within them to to get that. But uh, Tulsa can play you close. They. Uh, Let's see what they've done the last couple weeks. They've been able to keep games close despite their offense turning the ball over. Yeah. You know. Um, USF, they won 32-31. Memphis, they beat 35-29. Houston, they lost 45-10. to But Arkansas State, they uh, they beat 41-34. And that's their only three wins. They did lose to Navy. Um Cincinnati's got to turn it on here. They uh, do. Th- this is the week that, that the CFP starts picking. Um, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, is is when CFP, the first poll comes out. Tonight, if you're watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah tonight. Yeah. Um, so, man, this is a tough one. Um, it's really tough because it, it's, it's, it's really going to boil down to the turnovers. Can they, yeah. can they turn Tulsa over? I believe that they can. Um, so I'm going to reluctantly take Cincinnati, Cincinnati to cover that. Hey, I'll be fine getting that pick wrong because yeah. I would love Cincinnati to go win 45-2 to two yeah. or something like that. No, don't give up a safety. 45-3. <laughs> to three. Anyway, uh, Michigan State, three-point favorite against Purdue. Purdue, the dangerous team in the Big Ten. That's the best way to describe them. They're not going to win the Big Ten, but, boy, they can be anybody any week. Ohio State knows that from a few years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, they beat Iowa. Uh, Purdue's got a great passing game. They're yeah. efficient. They don't turn the ball over. They can move the ball. The problem is, and we talked about this earlier, I just don't think they can stop Kenneth Walker. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I just think Michigan State up front, they're huge. They move people off the ball. Uh, Walker just needs, you know, he needs a four-inch hole and he's gone. Yeah. And I don't think Purdue can stop that. Yeah, they're giving up 139 uh, yards per game on the ground. Yeah. Um, their defense is fairly good, one one seventy four. But the Big Ten isn't, you know, these high powered offenses week in and week out. So you're going to see kind of lower numbers like yeah. that, whether it's a good defense or not. Um, I got uh, Minnesota, or I got Michigan State. Yeah, I do too. Um, I think that they're going to be in the top four this week. Uh, I had them two in mine in my rankings. Oh, okay. Yeah. At Georgia, uh, Michigan State. They have the best win. I they mean, do. really, they have the best win. Yeah. You, you can't really give Georgia the Clemson win because Clemson, yeah. you know, just turned it be, to be what they are. Right. Um, Kentucky loses two in a row, so they're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So um, – Now, Georgia, ha- they, they're going to get – I mean, they're locked in now. They're in the SEC championship game, so most right. likely they're getting Alabama. Yeah. So um, they'll get their shot to have that big win. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, – I'm going to take Michigan State. I'm, I'm, I was surprised that they weren't – favored by more but like you right. said I mean Purdue is able to to I mean through the air at least they're able to to put up a lot mm-hmm. um and Michigan State is giving up 300 yards through the air per game that's why it's that's why the spread's so close yeah yeah um and and Purdue is the, their offense is completing uh 307.1 yards per game and only seventy nine point five on the ground. That doesn't sound like a Big Ten team. No, it just no. It's usually not flipped, but it's usually yeah. a lot more evened out than that. Right. Um, but I'll take Michigan State. I, I think they they. Um, it's just three. So. I think they win by at least seven. Okay. Navy's at Notre Dame. Notre Dame a twenty and a half point favorite. Um, man, I, I'm going to stick with my gut. I had um, actually I didn't have it picked. It's because I had a hard time thinking about this. Yeah, Navy, big, you just don't know about Navy. That's where, a big spread for, it for an option team. Yeah. I mean, against an option team. Although we said that again with Wake and Army, and look what happens. So, <laughs> um, you know. Um, yeah. I'm going to stick with Notre Dame here to cover and win by 21. Um, 
Jack Cohn's been playing really good. Uh, Notre Dame's been able to score points, and I I don't know. I think that what happened with Cincinnati and Navy was kind of a fluke. So um, I'm going to take Notre Dame to cover reluctantly against Navy. It's at Notre Dame. If this was at Navy, if it was on the road, I'd take Navy. But since it's in South Bend. I mean, SMU has, you could probably say, a more high-powered offense than, than Notre Dame. And SMU um, beat them 31-24. to it's that option that just scares me on these big spreads like that. Yeah, I just I don't like it. Um, but Notre Dame has a much better defense than SMU as that's well. That's true. That's much that's very true. Um, so really, they they. I mean, it's not just I, I'm gonna. That's three touchdowns. I'm gonna take Navy. Okay. I'm just uh, I don't love that big spread um, against a team that runs a triple option. And okay. I was looking for the uh, I wanted to see on Navy how much they they cover. Notre Dame is five and three against the spread. Um, Navy's below that. They're they're well. They're both five and three. So okay. it, that really doesn't help out whatsoever. Okay. So, but I'll take Navy. Okay. Keep Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is a three point favorite against West Virginia. The reason this spread I think is so close is because of West Virginia's uh, defensive front. And it's going to be very hard for um, Oklahoma State to run the ball. Yeah. Um, I listened to some of Coach Gundy's uh, radio show today, and he was talking about that. He just said that you know what they do, their schemes up front, it's going to make it really hard for them. Yeah. Uh, so Spencer Sanders is going to have to have a good game. He's going to have to throw the ball, and not turn the ball over. Um, fortunately, he's kind of hit a groove lately, and he's been playing really well. And I kind of think he continues that. I got Oklahoma State covering that three. Yeah, um, West Virginia I, just beat Iowa State last week. So yeah, they beat Iowa State thirty-eight to thirty-one. They beat TCU the week before twenty-nine seventeen. But before that, man, they were on a skid. Um, they lost to Baylor forty-five to twenty. They lost to Texas Tech twenty-three to twenty. Um, that was pre-firing of Matt Wells. And then, um, of course, they hung with OU uh, sixteen to thirteen. Um, OU, I think, has since fixed some of the issues, not all of them, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, give me, uh, give me. Oklahoma State just had a, a just an easy game against yeah. Kansas this last week, so um, I, I don't think that they were really stressed too much. Um, Good week to get people healthy, right? Yeah, so I, I think uh, I think Oklahoma State easily covered that. Now they're going to Morgantown. Morgantown can get pretty crazy, um, but Could it's be not, cold. It's not a Friday night game. It's not a Thursday game, right. so I'm not really worried about the, um, you know, them burning tires or anything down okay. there. Okay. Auburn is at Texas A&M. Texas A&M is a four and a half point favorite. Auburn has just surprised me of late, especially their defense. I think they're just playing really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think they would beat Ole Miss, and they did. I yeah. mean, it just um, that really surprised me. Um, I'm cautious here. I'm not trying to jump on an Auburn bandwagon or anything. But Texas A&M recently had a bye week. They are removed from that Alabama win by a few weeks. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think that they're fully prepared for Auburn because I don't think they realize how good Auburn is now. Because Auburn's not the team it was at the beginning of the season. Yeah. This is not the Auburn team that lost to Penn State. This is a different Auburn team. And we've seen several teams do this. They've transformed throughout the season. And Auburn's a team that has gotten much better through the season. Yeah. And so, um, look, I have Auburn with the outright win, so I'm going to take Auburn in the points. Hmm. Let's see. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I, I just um, – both teams to me are kind of, you know, kind of similar. I mean, they're both – what six and two? Um, it's it's really sad when two lost teams are now a part of the top fifteen because yeah. that means that college football is almost over. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in, in uh, to make a pick, man, I I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna go with Texas A&M. I'll go against you on this one. Okay. Take Texas A&M. Okay. Yeah, they're, um, they're, the, they're the home team. Yeah. Two thirty crowd. I. All right, know. Baylor six and a half point favorite against TCU. We just talked about Gary Patterson being fired, uh, did, wasn't even allowed to complete the season. Throws that whole program in disarray at the yeah. moment. 
Baylor is playing some of their best football right now, coming off the win over Texas. I got Baylor easily covering six and a half. Now, Baylor's got Oklahoma right after this game. Yeah, but they've already had a loss to Oklahoma State. I don't think they have a letdown. I, I just know, don't. but this could be a trap game. It could be, but I don't think it is. And TCU could go out and, and say, hey, you know, we're going to play, you know, despite the uh, the firing of our mutual parting of ways. So you got TCU? Yeah. Um, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. <laughs> this is a rivalry game. I mean, they they yeah. they consider each other crosstown rival or not crosstown, but uh, uh, in-state, in-state rivals, and um, you know they both are kind of similar in in how big they are, how big their programs are. Um, they both got new stadiums around. I think the same time or refurbished. Yeah. I, I don't remember if TCU got an outright brand new one. Yeah, they did. It okay, was brand new. Um, and both schools, you know, they, they recruit the same players from Texas. Um, I'm going to take Baylor. I just okay. – Gary Bohannon is, is on a roll right now. Um, they're scoring seven, uh, 37.4 points and only giving up 19.4. Uh, TCU has given up as much points as they're scoring. Uh, I, I'm tempted to take the trap game here pick. Um, but I won't. I'll take Baylor. Okay. I, I think Dave Rand is a heck of a coach, and I, I think – I don't know. Maybe he gets them, you know, sorted out. Penn State goes to Maryland. Penn State, a ten-point favorite. Listen, uh, they played well with against Ohio State. They really did. Clifford's been hurt. Yeah. But look, forget the players. I mean, this that's three losses in a row for Penn State. Yeah. If James Franklin wants the USC job yeah. or wants to, well, leave, he might already be thinking, I'm taking one of these jobs. Well, but if I get the offer, he may not get the offer if they continue to lose. Because last I, year, yeah. I know it was a COVID year, but they lost like the first five after being ranked. Yeah. And now they've lost three in a row. They're not going to lose a fourth. They got to come out and play ball. They just have to come out and play ball. Um, and Maryland is doing its Maryland thing. They're mm-hmm. tanking, tanking terrapins right now. Um, so I got Penn State easily covering ten. Yeah. Um, Tonga Vilo is playing. Okay, mm-hmm. um, he's eleventh in the country in in passing yards, tied for sixteenth in touchdowns. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know what what Penn State team comes out. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know who that team is. It seems like they don't really have an identity right now. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, late season Maryland the last few years has been just not a great team. Yeah. Um, so here's to hoping Penn State turns it around and okay. and beats Maryland pretty well. They have to travel to Maryland, so right. um, so you got them covered. Yeah, I'll take Penn State. Wisconsin twelve point favorite at Rutgers. Here's the bottom line: Wisconsin beat Iowa. Wisconsin controls their own destiny. They went out. They win the Big Ten West. Um, players know that. Coaches know that. They're not going to let up. They're not going to take their foot off the throttle. I it, I know it's Rutgers. They're going to respect Rutgers, and they're going to go in there prepared. Yeah. Wisconsin covers 12. Yeah, I got them wrong this week. Um, I just, man, I just thought that Iowa's defense would be a little bit too much for them. Um, but they've always got a running back who can just yep. <laughs> kill it. So I've got Wisconsin as well. LSU is at Alabama. L- Alabama is a 20, 28 and a half point favorite. I didn't make a, a pick ahead of time with this one just because I don't know. 28 and a half seems like a lot. It's a rivalry game. Yeah. It's a game that LSU players, no matter what, are going to be up for huge. Um, but can they hold it within 28 and a half? I, I just don't know. Alabama, um, I feel like. I feel like they're way overranked right now. We'll see where the college football playoff committee puts them. Yeah. But I mean, it's like Herb Street and all these other people have them at two or three in the polls, despite a loss to an unranked two-loss team. Yeah. Like they, they're just kind of giving them a buy on that, um, which you know that's fine if you no, want to. No, it's ranked. They're in the top fifteen. They weren't at the time. Oh, okay. At well, the time. well, here's the yeah. thing though: if you're if if you're going to say Oklahoma had a top twenty-five win because Texas was ranked. I don't. I look at. I know, but everybody do. else does. Oh. Yeah. So if if the like polls that. are thinking are counting that as a ranked win, yeah. Then losing to an unranked team when they're unranked at the time has to be an unranked 
uh, lost to an unranked There's team. There's so many things that are subjective in college yeah. football. I'm just saying, if it counts know, as a yeah. win, it's got to yeah. count as a loss. So, um, but they seem to have ignored that. So, um, anyway, uh, this is Orgeron's last chance at Alabama. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That LSU defense is just not very good. Um, but Alabama's defense hasn't been playing well either. I mean, it was close against Tennessee. Yeah. Um, and I compared LSU to Tennessee. I am going to I'm going to take LSU in the points here. I think this stays within 28 and a half. I think LSU is up for this game and they want to win. Um, Alabama just they're just overrated in my opinion right now. I don't think they're a top four team. I just don't. I don't think they have the defense for it. But we'll this see. is in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Um, Alabama's five and three against the spread. LSU is three and five. Okay. Um, so they're just not covering. Um, take a look at their last few weeks. Um, and this is a six o'clock game. Um, you know, with, is Orgeron's head in the game? You know, it, it just looks like on the sideline he just doesn't care. It looks like, you know, he knows it's it's senior spring yep. and he's he's on his way out and he just doesn't really look like he, he cares all that much. Um, Fortunately, he's not playing. The players are. So, right, right. You know, and the other coaches do care. Yeah, so. and Bryce Young's playing really well. Um, 2,453 yards, 26 touchdowns, three interceptions. Um, to Max Johnson's uh, 2,009 yards, 20 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Uh, I'd give the edge to Alabama's rushing um, and the receiving. Uh, I think they're. Well, all... I have no doubt Alabama's going to win the game. Yeah, but but they're giving up more points than they usually do, and, yeah. and their defense has kind of slid the yeah. last few years. Um, and and you can see it in recruiting. You can see it. Um, in, in defensive rankings. And I started to say this like two seasons ago that Alabama's defense isn't this just mm-hmm. vaunted defense like it used to be right. where every year they were one and two. And I would get like the worst responses because people just didn't believe it. And I'm like, right. you got to look no, at the numbers. True. Like they are sliding. Now, they're still in the top ten you know, every year, but they're not one and two like they were. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean by sliding. So... Um, they used to have a pretty mediocre offense and a top tier defense. Yeah. Kind of what Georgia is this year. Yeah. Is what they used to be. And then they've they've turned it on on offense, but they've lost on defense. You know what? They're both coming off of a bye week. Um, I'm going to take Alabama. Okay. Uh, I think it gets out of hand for LSU. Okay. Uh, five games left. Tennessee is at Kentucky. Kentucky is a one point favorite. Um, I like Tennessee in this one. I don't know why. Kentucky does play really well at home. Um, Kentucky would probably be the obvious pick, but this just hasn't been an obvious season in college yeah. football. And my gut tells me Tennessee. I'll stick with Tennessee. Yeah, this this one. I mean, probably by by game time, um, it may be a pick 'em at that point. Um, man, this is like a fifty fifty toss up for me. Yeah. I mean, and I mean just just a, a win, you know, just yeah. win-loss. I, I think it's a toss-up. I, I don't know. Um, Kentucky's on a, a two-game skid. So is, that, so is Tennessee, but Tennessee's played um, Alabama and uh, Ole Miss, where Kentucky lost to Mississippi State and Georgia. So both have played really good competition. Um, I'm just going to go with the home team. I'm going to go with Kentucky. All right. Iowa is a 12-point favorite against Northwestern. They're going to Northwestern. Iowa, two-game skid, losing to um, uh, shoot, Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin and is it Purdue. Yeah. Um, I blanked out there for a second. Um, <laughs> anyway, you know, they should not have a problem with Northwestern. They really shouldn't. Yeah. But they got to find it some offense. You know, yeah. and is this a is this one of those? I've got it down at the bottom of the list, which means it's probably a night game, which really concerns me. Six o'clock, going to Chicago, playing in a primetime game. Yeah, um, but Northwestern's given up twenty seven points uh, per game. They're only scoring nineteen, and they're giving up four hundred twenty yards of off uh, uh, on defense. Yeah, um, I, I just think that this is a good game for Iowa to kind of, you know. Re- 
recourse some things, correct some stuff, yeah, um, and go out there and and get a, a big win against Northwestern. So you got them covered? Yeah, yeah, I'll take them to cover too. All right, three games left. Boise State is at Fresno State. Fresno State is a five point favorite. Boise State four and four on the year. Very uncharacteristic of a Boise State team yeah. to be four and four like this. Fresno State controls their own destiny. Went out, you win the West, and you're in the Mountain West yeah. Championship game. I lo- I picked Fresno State to upset San Diego State. I watched the game. I had to watch it because I couldn't do my redo my top twenty five until that game was over. And I was really impressed with Fresno State. And um, I am going to stick with them this week. And I think they cover the five and beat Boise State. Yeah, I'm going to take Fresno State. Um, but I do want to mention Fresno State is six and three against the spread. BYU is five and three. Boise against State. Boise State. Sorry, what did I say? You said BYU. Oh, I I think of those teams okay. similar a lot. Of, um, anyway, uh, man, I'm gonna take Fresno State. Uh, was that three? Five. Five. Five and a, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna stick with Fresno State. Okay, Oregon is six and a half point favorite against Washington. Uh, Oregon has to feel a little slighted right now because because the truth. Look, you lost to Stanford. Stanford's a three win team. Yeah. I don't see a path for Oregon to get in without a lot of losing up front. Yeah. I just don't. A one loss Oregon, um, Pac-12 champs, you don't get in, and it's and and I know everyone's like, but they beat Ohio State. But do you remember a couple it was years the second ago? Second game of the year. Geez. Do you remember a couple years ago when Ohio State won the Big Ten, one loss, but yeah. the loss was to Purdue. Yeah. A bad Purdue, and it was enough to keep them out. Well, look at OU. So, look at OU losing to. Uh, Iowa State one year, Kansas yeah. State two years in a row. Yeah. The, these teams aren't perfect. I mean, they're still human. Um, you know, I'm not going to – you know, I always say the first game of the season, I don't really count that towards your win-loss record. Yeah. I wish they had scrimmages. Um, I get why they don't. I mean, you don't want to throw your players into one more, Yeah. you know – well, they could injured, they could go back but, to eleven game regular season, and that twelfth game could be a preseason. Game. Yeah, that's true. You know, just um, a practice to get ready. But you could even go so far as to say, you know, the second, maybe even third game. You're not even you're not even at mid season right. form at that yeah. point. Yeah. Um, at some point, these teams have to be given, you know, a little bit of grace to develop throughout the season. Um, you know, that's why the national championships played at the end and not right. the beginning or the middle. Um, and so, um, I just, uh, as far as this game goes, I think yeah. Oregon covers six and a half against Washington. Yeah. I really uh, do. But I don't think Oregon finishes the season with one loss because the games they have coming up, they get, they still have Utah and they have Oregon State. And, uh, and Oregon State has proven they can beat Oregon. Yeah. That and, and Washington, uh, Brendan Radley Hiles just got a game ceiling, uh, yeah. interception, uh, you know, to kind of end the game this last week. So proud of him. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm going to take Oregon. Okay. Last game, Indiana against Michigan. Michigan is a 19-and-a-half point favorite. Um, you got to think Michigan mounts, bounces back yeah. in a big way. They have to. I mean, they, they are not out of it by any means. Yeah. You know, they, they still have um, Ohio State left to play. They still have Penn State. Um, they, there's a lot for them still to play for, and and it is not out of the realm of possibility that Michigan still makes the playoffs. Yeah. So, but they got to dominate. They yeah. really do. They got to go out. They got to win this game. I'm going to take Michigan to cover the 19 and a half. I really hope this is this loss against Michigan State isn't the beginning of a slide for them. Yeah. Um, because for really, I want them to. I would love to see one loss. One loss. High State. Yes, I would love. Yes. I I really wanted OU and OSU to be undefeated, undefeated. going yep. into. That and game. I was, and I know Michigan State fans. I'm sorry, but I was rooting for Michigan. I picked Michigan because I wanted Michigan undefeated at yep. the end of the year playing Ohio State. I really did. Because that, so. that's an even bigger win. Yes. Um, Indiana's two and six against the spread. They're without um, Michael Penix Jr. Um, man, they just keep losing him, you know. Yeah. And, and when they do, they are not the same team. Um, Jack Tuttle but, is not as good as But Penix. even with him this year, they weren't as good as yeah. they've been. Right. Um, so I've got Michigan to bounce back this week and to, to cover. I think they, they easily win by, by 21 or more. That's it for our picks for Week 10. Hey, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit that like button. Leave your comments. And then go check out busr.com slash redzone. Sign up, get some free play. And always check us out on social media um, and Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Yep. Um, that's all we have. You got anything else? 
All right, have a great day. We'll see you next week. Take care.